The other week I was browsing the news and a headline caught my eye. Apparently 1 in 10 people who get lung cancer in the UK isn't because they smoke, but it's because of pollution and air quality in general. The scientists found that it's caused by a form of pollution called particulate matter 2.5, which are really tiny bits of stuff smaller than a human hair, like organic compounds, airborne metals, which are 2.5 microns in diameter. These are smaller than another form of particulate matter that you may be familiar with, known as particulate matter 10, and these include dust, pollen, mold, and many other things that cause lots of problems for people with allergies and asthma. This got me thinking. Could I use my smart home to detect when my air quality was bad and help me make it better? Could my smart home actually help prevent me from getting cancer, hay fever, or an asthma flare-up? I did a bit of research and found that there are quite a few air quality smart home sensors available on the market, and they're actually pretty cheap. I ordered a couple of these to see how they actually worked and how accurate they might be. In this video, I'm going to take a deeper look into what these sensors can measure and why that's useful. I look at where you should place your sensors to get the best readings, and how you can use these sensors to trigger automations to potentially improve your air quality. Let's take a look. I bought myself a few of these Tuya Smart Air Quality Sensors because they specifically claim to be able to measure PM2.5 levels, which a lot of the other sensors didn't do. I bought the Zigbee version and I immediately hooked it up to Home Assistant using Zigbee to MQTT. It paired instantly and started giving me data points. Apparently it's also compatible with ZHA, and if you're not using Home Assistant, you could also set this up using the Tuya or Smart Life apps if you're using those instead. This sensor measures carbon dioxide, or CO2, formaldehyde, humidity, PM2.5, temperature, and general volatile organic compounds, also known as VOC. The first thing I wanted to do was to determine if this thing actually detected exposure to poor air quality, so I did a little bit of scientific testing. You can see that it immediately reacted to the changes I introduced in the air quality. If we take a look at the charts over time, you can see that I had no problems detecting my volatile, warm, moist, and carbon dioxide based test air that seemed to linger around for about 3 to 4 minutes. I performed some similar tests with a bunch of chemicals I found in my home, as well as cooking fumes, and saw similar results. At first glance, it seemed to do a pretty good job of reacting quickly when things that I expected to negatively impact the air quality were released nearby. But how accurate is it really? The temperature and humidity readings that it gave back to Home Assistant seemed to be a few degrees or percentage points different from those that were reported by the Acara temperature and humidity sensor that I have in the same room. That's not really surprising, given that these aren't really meant to be precision instruments, and you can actually calibrate them if you want to get more precise results. The other readings were way out though. I placed two of these exact same sensors right next to each other for several hours, and they both reported quite different results, especially when it came to measuring PM2.5, which is why I bought the damn things in the first place. These two sensors barely ever moved, and reported wildly different results. I found a really in-depth review of a similar sensor on the Smart Home Scene website. In that, they pulled apart the sensor to see what was inside, and put it through a ton of different tests and paces, and they came up with a pretty similar opinion. Apparently the CO2 sensor in these isn't even a real CO2 sensor. It infers, which is a fancy word for guesses, what it thinks the CO2 levels are by using an algorithm and some of the other sensor data. The VOC sensor is apparently pretty good though. Basically, this is a cheap and inaccurate sensor, but it's probably good enough to show you directionally how the air quality is changing in your house, and you can use that to take action. So to answer my original question, can these sensors help prevent you from getting cancer, hay fever, or an asthma flare-up? Probably not a huge amount, but they could still be useful in helping you measure a baseline for your home and alert you when something has dramatically changed. The VOC, or Volatile Organic Compound Sensor, seemed to react pretty well when chemicals like deodorant or nail polish remover were detected nearby. It's been proven that prolonged exposure to these sorts of chemicals can have adverse health effects. Sadly, the PM2.5 sensors seem to be almost useless, which is a shame because it would have been great to be able to take action when these values changed as well. I'm going to probably continue using these sensors to give me at least a basic understanding of how some of the air quality levels are changing in my smart home. If you're going to be using these sensors in your own home, you need to make sure you place them in the correct place to get the best results. 
Not surprisingly, it's best to mount them near where you're going to be breathing the air. Don't place them behind a couch or in a cupboard. Put them out in the open at the same height your head is usually going to be at and make sure there's enough space around the sensor so that it gets a good sniff of the air quality. I placed one here on my work desk and another one on my bedside table as that's generally out in the open and where my head is going to be. So how can you use these sensors to improve your air quality? Well, I've got a few automations set up in Home Assistant that flash some lights in a red color and send me a push notification when the air quality levels go significantly above their normal values in a particular room. I can then open a window for a few minutes until the air quality goes back to normal. Or in some cases, the air quality might be decreased because of something that's happening outside, especially in Australia during bushfire season. So in that case, close the window instead of opening it. If you have a fancy air purifying fan like this Dyson one, you can have it automatically turn on using an IR blaster, or if you're using an air conditioning system that has a HEPA filter built into it, you could turn that on instead. So to wrap it up, these are cheap sensors that don't perform that well. So don't expect them to be precision medical grade devices that are going to save your life. But they are useful enough to give you some actionable information that may mildly improve your air quality. Are you using any air quality sensors in your home? How accurate are they? Do you think you could cobble together a more accurate one using an ESP32 and some off the shelf sensors? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful or a wee bit informative, then please give it a like and a subscribe to the channel. I regularly release videos like this one about smart home gadgets and home automations. By subscribing to the channel, you get to know when I release new videos and then together we can make your home smarter.